That's what we want. That's what we want. Come here. Come here, you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what we're looking for right there. Hey, today we got pre-spawn bass. You can tell by that belly right there. Let me put that fish back and we have water that's extremely low it's about four foot down than it more usually is plus we got high winds coming in this afternoon right now that swim jig seems to be working we're just glad you're here don't miss this episode we're now south of 55 we're gonna take a little scenic drive Downhill State 49. We're just looking for a good time. Come on, baby. There you go. Swing in right here. Yeah. All right. Whew. Eating that swim jig really, really good. All right there. Basically, all I'm doing today, man, he really wrecked up that trailer. Let's put a new trailer on there. It's, it's going lay downs close to deep water. Now the wind is starting to pick up. But for right now, these fish are they're still trying to get up to spawn. But since we've got low water conditions like this, they're somewhere in between. And there can be a bunch of baits that can work for you. Top water, shallow run, and crankbaits. But with it being so tough lately and the bite so and just difficult, going to a swim jig sometimes is it's not a it's not as intrusive as like a bladed jig or a big spinner bait. I can reel it over the branches, drop it in, and I can be a little bit more subtle with it. And I've seen a bunch of bait fish in this area, so I do know that they're chasing shad. So throwing a white, at least a white themed swim jig like that with a twin tail on the back is really going to be in my favor of just seeing if I can generate some bites. I have a feeling when that wind picks up, it's probably going to get better. That's a good one there. I'll get the clam for him. Come here, baby. Yeah. Oh man, look at this one right here. <laughs> That's how you want to be in a swim jig. Look at that. That is awesome. All right. Beautiful fish, still pre-spawn. Uh, we weren't we weren't sure what was gonna happen today. I mean, this lake is usually about four foot higher and I haven't been out here the whole year. They're working on a dam, that's why the water level's so low. But these fish wanna get to the bank. You've got 68, 69, 70 degree water temperature. Some of them spawn, but some have not. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is try to cover water with horizontal presentations, today being the swim jig, because there's a lot of cover still left in the water. So I wanna spend more time covering that and less time getting hung up. That is one of the reasons that I chose a swim jig. We say this, and we'll say this probably e almost every episode, but it's putting pieces of the puzzle together. So they weren't reacting to other baits, so I started dropping that swim jig as I'm moving it along over branches. And we'll get into a little more detail later as this pattern develops, but so far, it's working out exactly how I hope. Man, hammerhead. That is so much fun. That is so much fun. We are really starting to put it together now. Nice, nice chunky fish. So, so far what we've got, windy banks, as you can hear, they've got to be close to deep water and the wood is definitely prevalent. The only wood that's left in the water after, after the lake has been drawn down so much. So we're just going to keep going along there. I find a really good area. I'll probably go back over it with plastic. But when they're hitting horizontal presentations like this, I'm not changing a thing. This segment of Jim Crowley Outdoors is brought to you by these and other fine sponsors. He, no, he ate it again. There we go. Come here. I'm going to show you exactly exactly what we're doing. Look how they're eating that swim jig. And that's, that's all the way inside there. So, yeah, nice little fish right there. Okay, so here's what we're doing. As you can see, we're up on flats, close to deep water. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that swim jig, and this one happens to be a... a white and purple one and the reason I'm doing that is a water stain they are chasing shad matter of fact it's 71 72 degrees I think there might actually be in a shad spawn going on right now too so that color lure right there just draping it over the branches and in other words coming in contact with it then letting the drape fall down and reel back up in again and a very slow steady retrieve they're just coming up behind it sucking it in every fish we've had has eaten that thing where you almost can't see the lure what that tells me is I don't need to change a thing I don't need to change a color 
I don't need to change the retrieve speed. I need to just keep doing what I'm doing. We're gonna just keep searching down these bank. The sun's shining on it a little bit longer. The higher the sun gets, these fish are starting to move up toward the bank. We're definitely finding that wood is the key to that, close to deep water with a little breeze on it. We're gonna catch some more. There's one right there. Again, he ate it just like that. Look at that, that's fun. <laughs> now, that's what I mean by eating it, just like that. Get out of there. Fun, just little males, but they are right on the end of those branches. So all I'm doing is just taking a swim jig up, holding the rod high, and just swimming that bait back. The key, one of the keys to fishing a swim jig is don't point the rod directly at the lure. Either have it off to an angle. I like to hold it about 10 o'clock. That way when the fish grabs it, the rod has time to load and you simply pull back and the fish has. The, the hooking percentage on these lures, when you fish it the correct way, it's extremely high. So we're just gonna keep on doing that. Come here, you. Oh man, another good one. Holy cow. This is fun today. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Gotcha. Look at that. <laughs> Man, this is so much fun today. Isn't that a pretty fish right there? Oh. It, it's, it's really cool today because what it took us a little while to figure it out and we had a really f severe front last night. It's, that's been happening the whole year, right? Heavy thunderstorms, lightning and everything. And just like it's been, these fish are still pre-spawned. So later in the day, the wind's still blowing and you know we're, we need to stay in the wind to get that bite. This is just a little bank right here that drops off into deeper water, just like we've been fishing. And there's wood on it. Again, as soon as I threw up there and started swimming that jig, we went over this bank a couple times. Here is a tip that you need to remember. Just because you go over a bank early in the day, in the springtime, and you don't get bit, if, if, if you think that you should go back over it again, wait for that water temperature to warm up a little bit. After a front like this, those fish are going to start moving up again, and it may be a little bit later in the day. Just go over that bank again. If, it's, if you feel like it in your gut, and this is the third time we've been on this bank, and now we're getting big bites, sometimes in days like this, you don't get a lot of bites, but the bites we're getting are good. That makes it a great day. This segment of Jim Crowley Outdoors is brought to you by these and other fine sponsors. There we go. Oh, another nice one. Another nice one. Come here. Yeah, good. That swim jig is really doing it for us today. <laughs> Fun. Even when they're not that big, they're still whew, strong. Okay, so here's how I make all my swim jigs. As always, we're gonna put the part numbers up so that you can do the same. And there's a lot of skirt colors to choose from, just like there's a lot of different color jig heads and trailers. So this is a super stroke swim jig that we have. This is my this is my favorite one. It's got a great keeper on the back here for any type of trailer that you would like to put on, as well as a great collar here for the skirt. So once I take the, the purple magic skirt here, I simply just press down on the weed guard and I slide this up over that collar right there. The nice thing about these skirts, as well as that collar, is once those are on there, there, you can slap that jig on the water to knock grass off and the skirt's not gonna be coming down. These are extremely well-made skirts and that collar hugs real nicely, as you'll see, the way that jig is built. It holds up really, really well. Now I have mine, all, all my swim jigs made with a 4.0 VMC hook and you can do the same. They come with other type of hooks and you can use those or you can also have lure parts do a custom swim jig for you and I like that 4.0 VMC hook. Now for my trailer, this twin tail trailer right here 
was made from a mold that is a lure craft mold that you can purchase from lure parts online and this is the four inch size now for putting it on the back of this swim jig i simply just take my scissors and i cut off just the top part right there and this leaves me with the perfect size trailer for that swim jig then again what i'm going to do is i'm going to depress the weed guard and i slide that trailer up right like so again with that keeper it really keeps the plastic nice on there this way this is nice and straight this has been a great shad combination for me and i've used it in a number of different situations on numerous bodies of water and this combination right here has been extremely successful for me and you saw that today I also wanted to show you how I rig my swim jigs when I'm using a swim bait as a trailer. Now, this has been a very successful color combination for me. And as always, we're going to put up the part numbers there so you can see this. But this is a Dynamite Pro Swimmer from Lure Parts Online. It's a 3.8. And this uh, this is a this has been a great, absolutely great skirt for me. This is Blue Ghost. So I'm going to do the same thing with this jig, how I did the other one. That's going to be a depressed a weed guard and slide this skirt up on here like so. There you go. I love these skirts, they're just so easy to put on and like I said, they, they just don't come off. So that is the swim jig, that's 3 8 ounce again. And then what I'm gonna do with the swim bait is I'm gonna cut the top part of it off just behind the first ring. There is a nice slot in this swim bait right here that if you match it up with the hook, and I'll show you that in a second, that it will come out perfectly straight every time. So again, I am gonna press the hook down, or the weed guard right there. Then I'm gonna slide this up, stay right within that slot, about an inch, inch and an eighth. There you go. Slide that right on there, and it's a perfect fit every time that makes it so nice and easy and that is uh my my swim jig right there when i throw a swim bait on as a trailer a little bit later in the show i'm going to discuss with you why i choose between this and a twin tail but without question these have been my most successful setups Here's a setup that I use for the swim jig today. Now I want to start with the reel. This is new from American Tackle. This is the LPA composite casting reel. Extremely well built. It has over 15 pounds of drag on it. And it also features an eight to one gear ratio. Now a reel like this is perfect for throwing a swim jig because I can speed it up, I can slow it down, I can do whatever. And that eight to one retrieve takes up a lot of line. This would also be a great reel for throwing a lipless crankbait for throwing a buzz bait and even those of you who like to throw a jerk bait on bait casting equipment this would make throwing a jerk bait exceptional just a very very good reel for a lot of different techniques now the rod that i used is one that i built oh i don't know about a year ago and i built it with swim jigs in mind and that's a nice thing about being able to build your own stuff. I built this with a shorter handle back here and very little cork. It fits my hand really, really nicely and it's real easy to make roll cast or to make backhanded pitches with it. This is just a great reel because I don't have that real long handle hanging out back here. It's, it's also very, very light. And the model number on this one, this is an MB70 10 to 20. That's a Bushido blank from American Tackle. And it's an exceptional blank because I can use it for so many things. Let me give you a couple examples. Not only for using it for a swim jig, I also like using it for a worm rod. It's been a good front rod for me for throwing a big spinner bait that that 10 to 20 blank incorporates a whole lot of different techniques for largemouth bass fishing it's just a very very good rod to or a blank to be able to build on now the line that I used on here today is 17 pound suffix advanced fluorocarbon I've been throwing fluorocarbon more and more lately because it just sets up so well. And the advanced fluorocarbon is without question the most castable fluorocarbon line I've ever used. Now fluorocarbon is known to have a lot of memory in it. Not so with, with the advanced. It's a very supple line, it's very easy casting, and it has great abrasion resistance. Now, when throwing a swim jig, 
I use mostly two different types of trailers. Now the twin tail that we've already discussed today is a one that I throw quite a bit. Now I also will throw a swim bait on the back of it and that's usually between three and three and a half inches, sometimes four if I want a bigger profile. Now the reason that I choose one over the other, if I'm fishing around a lot of lay downs with a lot of branches, I really like the flatter trailer here because it will help the swim jig ride up over that cover a lot easier. You just won't hang up as much. When I use a swim bait trailer is when I'm fishing around grass. I really like this around grass. It has a nice kick, a little bit of a rolling action that you can incorporate into the swim jig by putting, by putting this uh, trailer on the back of it and it works really, really well. I also want to talk to you about the two types of retrieves that I use because sometimes they can make a difference. Now in the twin tail, most of the time it's just a slow to medium retrieve, dropping it over the branches, I'm fishing next to boat docks, drop it at the end of the boat dock, you get the idea behind that. Now. On the swim bait trailer, I use I, I use more of a shake. So when I make the cast out, I'm shaking the rod constantly as I'm reeling it in, kind of making the bait just dance a little bit more underwater. Those are the two retrieves that have been really, really successful for me. For those of you who've never fished a swim jig or have not fished one very much, I want to tell you what the bite feels like. Now, sometimes it feels exactly like the bite you get when you're fishing a plastic worm or a jig. You just get that solid thump and you know the fish is there. The easiest bite is when the rod loads and when that happens, the bass actually swims up behind the swim jig and turns with it after he inhales it, the rod loads, you pull back and you set the hook. Now the most difficult bite on a swim jig is when the bass swims up behind it, inhales it and starts swimming towards you with it. That's why it's extremely important to know not just with swim jigs, but with other lures, know what your lures are doing on every single cast because as soon as it feels different than what you're used to, that's when you need to set the hook. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Come on. Right here. He did exactly what we were just talking about. Come here. And he swam with it. And I just noticed that the jig just changed. It just felt different and uh, he ate it. And that's why we said before, you have to have bait awareness. You have to know what your lure is doing on every single cast. Because sometimes if that fish comes up behind it, just like that one did right there, and starts swimming towards you with the lure, if you're not used to what you should be feeling, you could quite possibly miss that fish. Bait awareness will definitely lead to more fish in the boat. Although fishing in the wind can be challenging, it can also be extremely rewarding. Realize that wind is current and current will position fish. Look for ambush areas like the ends of trees, backsides of points, stumps, etc. Bass will position themselves in sometimes likely areas to take advantage of easy prey. The swim jig is so effective because it can be reeled through cover easily, is mostly snag resistant, and has an extremely high hooking percentage. I use a color combo that resembled shad. I aimed my cast for wood cover that was close to, but out of the current. Where are you? Come here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Man, with this wind blowing the way it is, oh, listen, it's starting to howl out there now. Man, he really ate that thing. That's what's so great about spot lock because I might not actually have caught that fish if it wasn't for spot lock. It's letting me hold on these trees a lot better so I can make multiple casts. Spot lock, if you haven't had it on a boat, it's been out for years now, but I'm telling you, it'll be a step up in your game. Hummingbird makes a great product with that trolling motor and spot lock. That's a fantastic part of it. Windy days can make casting difficult. Position your boat to make your cast more effective. In a lot of cases, an unsuccessful day could have been more productive if casting was more precise. We're going to get that clam for that one, boy. Oh, yeah. Look at that one there. Come here, you. Come here, you. Yeah, buddy, look at that. Oh, man. That is a good way. Ooh, come here, you. Look at that. Lure parts online. Swim jig right in the nose, man. 
Oh, I hope we showed today. Look at that fish. I hope we showed you today why swim jigs can be so important and so good, especially when you have dropping water. These fish were still trying to get to the bank to spawn, and we figured it out and ended up on a great note. Yeah, that's just one pretty fish right there. Okay, sweetheart. Oh. <laughs> Man, that was an awesome day today. If you notice, we started using more of a net this year, and this is the Clam Fortis 160. And, and the reason I started using a net more this year is on those bigger fish, those rubber coated nets, just simply don't take the slime coat off as much as, I'm starting to see too many people flopping fish over the side of the boat and just letting them bounce around on the bottom of the floor. One, that's not good for the fish, and two, it's not good for our sport. If you think you can use a good quality net like that to land the fish, it's easier on the fish, it's better for me and get them back in the water quickly. Hey, we had a great, the Lord bless us with a great day today. I hope he does exactly the same for you on your next trip. Until then, I'm Jim Crowley. God bless you. We'll see you soon.